all things must work together with this image of all these formulas work together. Mm -hmm. It shows this order and it shows that in his, his faith that all of these things work together because God placed them there and because we believe that God is love then all of this must work together for for the good because because that's God's intention God wants everything to work together for for us to to love him to love each other and to work for a a world that is in harmony yeah with nature with each other Three, two, one. Welcome to Nerding Out with That Nerdy Catholic. I'm here with my esteemed co-nerd Cesar. We are continuing our discussion on the history of math. But before we get into it, I want to let you know that if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, head over to thatnerdycatholic.com and sign up for our email list. I promise we won't do anything nefarious with your email address. We'll just send you one or two emails a month letting you know when we post new content, uh, new th new things that we're planning, and just you know, general things in the world of nerdiness and faith. Um, if you think that we've earned it, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel, hit that bell if you want to get a notification on YouTube when we put a new video up, and uh, and like this video. You know, the more that you like it and subscribe, the more people see these videos, and the more that we can get this stuff out. If you like the merch that we're wearing, you get the nerding out that that nerdy catholic shirts and mugs you can head over to that nerdy catholic.com slash merch and last and not least if you are listening to this as a podcast uh, we would really appreciate it if you would uh, rate our podcast on your platform of choice and uh, and leave some feedback and comments there as well here we are we are we're getting pretty close to the modern age yes in we are mass. so where where are we going today cesar so today we're going to review the two mathematicians no the first one is uh gauss in my view is is one of the greatest of of all time and the other one is riemann and uh so both of them has a lot a lot of contributions to to our modern society. Mm -hmm. no. So why do you say Gauss is one of the most important mathematicians? So because as a mathematician, per se, he has a lot of influence in math, physics, and, uh, and even go a little more further than Newton went to, you know, to give a lot of tool to future physicists. Mm. And, to, and he also contributed to astronomy, too. We will see that. Uh, in order to to develop, you know, the new technology that we are currently using, you know, mm -hmm. and the new knowledge that we acquire. You now, okay, let's dive in. Yeah, let's in, dive in into Gauss. So Gauss was a German mathematician. He he was born in 1777, and uh, you know he was also a prodigy child. You no, know? mm. his mother and his father, uh, they 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 belong to a let's say low income family mm -hmm. so they didn't have that much and they didn't have uh, the means to send him to, to to important school you know so he went to uh, uh, to the Lyceum uh, the school of, of of his village but what what happened is that a teacher discovered that he was a prodigious child in mathematics especially in mathematics you no. Know? So uh, one of the teachers, I think, sent a letter to the Duke of Brunswick, and he was granted, uh, uh, let's say, like a scholarship mm -hmm. to uh, the to the. At that time, it was called Carolinum called uh, Carolinum School or something like that. the The idea is that if you remember Carlo Magno, who was uh, one of the uh, emperors done on, on, on France, like 
thousand years ago because we are we are we are talking thousand you know Carlo Mano is 800 be, mm -hmm. uh, after Christ. So one of his important works that he do is to establish these schools okay. for people to, to know. You know. And he was sent to this prestigious school. So there he learned a lot. He, he, um, he, he, he was given the opportunity by the, by the Duke of, of Brunswick to learn there. You know. And... Uh, And then after that, uh, he went to, to the university, you no. Know? And also the Duke of Brunswick grant him uh, the means to, to study, and he studied math. So he studied math, science, and classical language in mm. the Hanoverian University of Brunswick, you no. Know? So math, science, and classical language, three things. Wow. <laughs> you know, I I... In, when, when I went to the university, I just studied one, one thing. I, I, and it was not, it, it was just electrical engineering. That's yeah. it. <laughs> well, yeah, it, when, I was in, when I was in college, I studied three things, uh, just not at the same time. And I didn't, <laughs> I started a couple things, but didn't finish. And I ended up the same thing with a you know, computer science degree. There you but go. I couldn't imagine studying those three subjects at the same time. So, yeah, and, 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 and so, you know, so different. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 amazing. He was really truly prodigious. So well, and it's amazing. You, you look back, you know, look looking back at all of the all of the people that we've talked about so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I I think in in one way or another, they could probably all have been described as prodigies. Yes, and yeah, uh, and when you're looking at, especially when you're looking at one subject like math, and you're looking across. A very long period of time. We've only talked about a handful of people mm -hmm. over 2,500 years. Yes. And so, you know, every every generation, there's going to be one or two people that stand out in a certain area, and and those are the people that really push forward, and they will have an impact on on everyone, really, in some ways. That's true. At the age of 21, he has his PhD. Mm. No. Oh. So that that's, you know, I, I would say that right now there are a lot of people that at the age of 21 may have a PhD too, because we, we, we do have. But we'll see how, and that's, that's a, an, an important characteristic of, of all these men, no? They want to share what they know. Mm. You know? They want mm -hmm. to share what they, they, they know. And, and, and you will see that in, in, in Gauss. Gauss was offered uh, to have a position in St. Petersburg in, 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 in Russia at that time, uh, of course with more money, but uh, he, he, he was staying loyal to the Duke that, you know, uh, helped him a lot. Mm -hmm. And he entered also to, uh, after several attempts, he entered to, to the uh, Gotinga University. No, Gotinga University, I don't, I don't say. Gottinger University. The, the, I'm saying it wrong, probably. See, which it's, one? Where? Uh, so the name, the same name as the observatory. <laughs> And oh, uh, so. I so, yeah, Got Gottingen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you. German is hard. Yeah. <laughs> for me, <laughs> for me. Uh, German is hard for for everyone. Yeah, no, it's not German. A little more of his personal life before we go. Um, he was married, and he was married twice. You no, know? um, his uh, his first wife died after giving birth to to their last son, and that produces him an impact. You no, know? an impact mm -hmm. on, on 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 him. And uh, and then after that, he married uh, again another uh, another woman and had three. Three, three more kids with with this woman and it is said that you know the last daughter which is Teresa she uh, she was the one that took care of him until he until his last days no and after after taking care of him and he died then she married no so just just a little context on on on, on that one no um, what about his faith? Uh, he was always a faithful man. 
No. Mm -hmm. um, of course, being German, he was uh, more inclined to be Lutheran. He was Lutheran, actually. No, he was one of the guys that says God arithmetized, so God makes arithmetic in order to mm -hmm. do the work. No, mm -hmm. and uh, and also he he has another quote of him is I succeed. Not on account of my hard effort, but by the grace of the Lord. Mm. Now here is one genius. No, we have to remember that none his mom, actually his her, his mom was illiterate. Mm -hmm. No, and his dad uh, earned his life doing basically manual works. No, for other, and he he came from a humble beginning, but he recognized that he. He was talented not because of him, but for the, because of the grace of God. No, mm -hmm. so here is this guy, and we will see how many things he contributes. Saying, you know, this is not me. This is something that God gave me. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's 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 one thing to consider. No, so contributions for from Gauss. Of course, he's a mathematician. His large contribution will be in mathematics. No, um, he have several theorems in arithmetics. So that's why he said, you know, God arithmetizes because mm -hmm. he saw clearly as arithmetic as the base foundation of all math, which I really agree on this view. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the arithmetic, algebra, geometry, uh, trigonometry, <laughs> there's not there. Right. And um, he proved the, so most of these things is going to sound like Chinese. Uh, well, for the Chinese people, of course you understand, but for me that I don't understand Chinese, that's, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he proved the fundamental theorem of algebra, no? And uh, in Disquisition Arimetekai, which is his book that he published very seldom, by the way, no? He didn't, one, one of his characteristics is he didn't want to publish something unless he feels that he finished everything mm. and there was no contradictions, no conflicts, mm. no obscure things. No, mm -hmm. So most of the work of Gauss that we know is because post-mortem, uh, we have access to his uh, manuscripts mm -hmm. and then we know that he knows. And one of the things that we, we notice is that other mathematicians publish their theories and we go back to Gauss and he already know that. Mm. But he didn't publish because he didn't want unless he understand the whole thing mm -hmm. and make sure that everything is there, he mm -hmm. didn't want to publish that. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I wonder, you know, what in his, in his personality drove him to that, you know, that, that need for a level of maybe even say a level of perfection yeah. in the work that he put out. Yeah. That's, that's true. And we'll see later that Riemann, one of his uh, students, mm -hmm. it's also like him. <laughs> mm. We'll see so, later. So that maybe that's maybe that was a value that that he taught as well. Probably yes. Probably yes. So he contributed a lot of the prime number theorem, the arithmetic geometric mean, on star foundations. This is this is very important. He started the foundations of complex analysis. No. So we got the analysis, and you know, in 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 the real uh, in the real numbers, he start foundation of complex analysis. No, complex is real plus imaginary numbers. No, and that's one of that's going to be fundamental for his uh, success or Riemann. We will see that. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he started systemic systematic treatment of general hypergeometric functions. Uh, I don't know what it, that even means, <laughs> so I'm not going to try to explain yeah, that. Yeah. No? Well, and and at some point, one of our desires mm -hmm. of what we want to do on this channel is, you know, we don't want to be the only people talking here because, as as you can see, we don't really we don't understand all of this stuff, especially getting into this more uh, the more complex mathematics. And so, one of our desires is to to have you know, professionals to have the people that know yeah. the subject a lot better than we do come on mm -hmm. and talk about some of these things as well. Um, you know, I I promise I am never going to understand all of the complexities of arithmetic geometric mean or, or of hyper, especially the uh, of hypergeometric function. 
Yep. But uh, <laughs> but we do want to learn more about it, and so we want to bring on people that that know these these topics a lot better than we do. Uh, and so you know, look forward to that in the future. Uh, but but for now, you know, we are we're we're kind of glossing over, it, but we're you know kind of touching on the high level of these things just to, to look at the the contribution of of some of the most important people yes. in, in the history of math. Another highlight that I would like to say is, you know, there's of course for 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 the guys that has studied math, you know, uh, he's the one that started the inquiry of the conversion of infinite series. Mm. So infinite series converge to some value or to some function. Mm -hmm. He dive deep into that one. And one of my favorite things, uh, and that's probably because of my background, is that uh, he invented an algorithm to um, calculate the discrete Fourier transform. You know? And for some of you that may, what's that? Discrete Fourier transform is something that we use extensively to analyze. We use it in video, we use it in, in audio, we use it even in sounds, you no? Know? So every every and we can use the the Fourier transform for that, but computers are more uh, need an algorithm, a faster algorithm to calculate that. So the discrete Fourier transform is is one of those, you no? Know? And the discrete Fourier transform that that we are using right now came from a couple of mathematicians probably 50 to 100 years later. Mm -hmm. But because he didn't publish this, we know that he already know uh, a way to calculate that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he feel that that wasn't a finished work. And wow. so, he didn't publish. so this 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 guy is really a genius, no? Oh, and of course, you have you have all heard about the uh, probability, the Gauss bell. That guy is the, the one that, mm -hmm. that came up with that. You want to talk about the the other transformation? Yes. Well, so you know, talking about the uh, the normal distribution, uh -huh. the, the, the as you said, the Gauss bell uh -huh. that has been applied in so many different ways. And when I was looking over the notes when you sent them to me, I'm like, Gauss said, you know, why why is that name? There there's something that that wasn't in here that was ringing a bell. <laughs> Gauss, <laughs> yeah. Gauss bell. But I, I, I was thinking about it, and I realized. When I use Photoshop uh -huh. and when I edit, you know, videos, there's a there's a filter called a Gauss blur, mm. and it will blur the image or blur the video. And there are a number of different ways to 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 blur mm -hmm. in in editing software. The Gauss blur has always been one of my favorites because it, it creates a very nice, even soft blur. Uh -huh. I started reading about it. It's based on his normal distribution. So they apply his normal distribution to a pixel and all the pixels around it. Ah. And that's how they figure out how to blur. They adjust the, the color of each pixel based on the pixels around it. Nice. Off, off of his normal distribution. Interesting. Yeah. You see, we, we're still using. <laughs> we're still using his it's work today, yeah. One of the one of, one another highlight of his contribution in math is the non-Euclidean geometry. So we we, we review from I, I think was episode number two that Euclides was one of the uh, person that established a rigorous tower of knowledge mm -hmm. uh, that is called the Euclidean geometry. No? Mm -hmm. This and, is the and guy, that's, and that's a geometry based on a flat space. Exactly. Yeah. So he, he started asking the question, what about a, a, in, a, in a curve space, uh, how many uh, tangents can be done through mm -hmm. a single point? And that's, oh, there's more than one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's when known included geometry started. No? Mm -hmm. So he's the founder, and that's another thing that we can see a heavy influence in Riemann because Riemann will develop more around this. No? We'll mm -hmm. see that now. So, but his contribution doesn't end in mathematics. He, he also contributes in, in physics, no? He helped discover, because of course, he, in, in Gottinger University, there was, there was a, also an observatory, no? That has been generous, uh, let's say, funded by the Duke of Brunswick. 
that uh, in that observatory he, he he spent a lot of time and he discovered the dwarf planet Ceres. No, um, with his math he he was able to calculate. Okay, if 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 there are three positions in three different times, I can calculate you know the the orbit of of, of this celestial body. Yeah? And he did that, and he he gave us this methodology in in physics. No, um, he he is founder of geophysics. No. Uh, which is a which is a natural science concern in physical process and physical properties of the Earth. No, so he's the the, the first one of a study of the magnetism of, of, wow. of the Earth. No, so and he invented a a, a device to measure uh, the magnetic field of the Earth. Actually, the magnetic field of everything. No, uh, even a a dipole magnetic, mm. but. Of course, he was using to measure the uh, and wow. the magnetic field of the Earth. No, so by doing that, he established the fundamental principles of also of magnetism. No, and um, in in his invention, we have the heliotrope, which is an instrument that you know because he he was interested in measurement in, in measure uh, the area of landscapes, and uh, and we know the Earth is not flat; it's mm -hmm. curved. No, so in long distance, how, how do we we measure that in long distances? Mm. No, so that that was the heliotrope no. was an invention of, of him to do that. No, we saw we already talked about the magnetometer, and there's another important contribution: the telegraph. Wow, he alongside with Edward Weber, they both invent the telegraph. Wow, so there you go. We, we, we well, got... so you imagine. With all those inventions, all those discoveries, where would we be without him? Yes. I mean, we'd probably be at least, you know, 50 years behind. I mean, we, we, someone else probably would have come along and discovered the same things, but who knows when. Yes, exactly. And, 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 the, other, and the other thing is you, you can see how these mathematicians are very tied to physics. Mm -hmm. you know? So they see their math, of course, we, we see a pattern here. Always mm -hmm. the math is always advanced mm -hmm. than the physics yeah, and yeah. and the invention of things. No? Yeah, but, yeah. The, the, the we've, we've talked about before this this pattern of a mathematician discovering some formula, not having any idea what it could be used for, uh -huh. and then later on having a physicist or a chemist or, or someone else or an engineer come along and say. I need I need some way to describe something I'm looking at. Oh, look! <laughs> Here's this formula <laughs> no? discovered, you know, fifty, a hundred years or more earlier. Yeah, this describes perfectly what I'm looking at. <laughs> yes, yes, and and one of the things that um, maybe I forget I, I forgot to put in my notes is that. You know the complex analysis and and, and the mathematical formulas that uh, we have from Gauss was instrumental for Maxwell mm. to describe the electromagnetic field, the wow. final four formulas. No, wow. so Maxwell we are talking about by uh, the end of nineteenth century, and the, the, this this is Gauss. No, mm -hmm. so I mean it, it's impressive. It, it, it's really impressive. So. What about Riemann? All right, let's go on to Riemann. He's a student, no? Mm -hmm. So he's George... A he's a student of Gauss. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Not mine. No, no way. <laughs> 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 I will have to learn a lot from Riemann or from Gauss. And, yeah. and still, you know, there will be a lot of things hard for me to understand, really hard. George Frederick Bern Bernhard Riemann, September 1826 to July 1866, no? So what do we know about Riemann? Riemann was a mathematician and also a, a German mathematician. And he contributed to analysis, number theory, differential theory, and geometry. No? Uh, one of the things that we already mentioned, he was one of the students when Gauss was a professor in, in Göttingen. No? And um, he has a lot of uh, contributions in the in the real uh, in the um, real analysis, no. But the most 
thing that he's famous for is the formulation of the integral and the Riemann integral, mm. and are also a, a lot of his Fourier series. That's one mm -hmm. thing. No? Yeah. I have to say, in, in my three years of calculus, it was those integrals that, that really tripped me up the most. <sighs> Yeah, that you have to where? How do I solve this? Yeah, no. yeah. And I and I and I remember also in 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 college when you know uh, I have the uh, you have an equation. I say so apply the transformation of Fourier. <laughs> and you know at that time I I I didn't have this modern calculator that can do mm -hmm. that thing. So I have to do it manually. I remember one just. One of these problems went two or three pages to start <laughs> solving that. Yeah, it was yeah. a long thing. Yes. Yeah. He was also pioneer of the differential geometry and he, filled in, he founded the field Riemann geometry, no? which is a set of... We, we, we already talked about non-included geometry. No? Mm -hmm. Non-included geometry is... Every geometry that is not Euclid, mm -hmm. basically, no. Basically, any geometry that does not deal with the flat, flat surface. Flat surface yeah. Yes, yes. So Riemann has uh, the Riemann geometry, mm -hmm. no, which is of course uh, an inherit from from Gauss. You can see mm -hmm. that clearly, no. And by doing this, he great he make a great great contribution to general relativity. Mm. But here we are talking about. A guy that lived in from 1826 to 1876. Mm, wow. And I Albert imagine. Einstein is from 1920 uh, something when he came. Yeah. I, I think it's 1920. Well, his when, his, when his he work came. his work started in in the early 20s. Yeah. Yes. Or maybe maybe late teens. Yeah. 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 So so say 100 years before. Yeah. Well, and and <laughs> even you know it wasn't until you know. I don't know when in, in Einstein's life where they where where they started to look at the possibility of of warped space because of of gravity. Mm -hmm. So so this the this work in non Euclidean geometry they had no way of knowing this the possibility of 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 space being warped or even what space was. You know they're. Yes. they're the understanding of what space was from the time of of Gauss and, and Riemann to the time of Einstein, or even in the, the later years of, of Einstein's career, mm -hmm. changed greatly. Yes. And so, as we've said you know, many times, the application of this math was not understood until well after it was you know, discovered. Remember, Riemann deals with complex analysis. So, mm -hmm. so Riemann make Furthermore, uh, because when we talk about space, we are talking about 3D. Uh, mm -hmm. In the case of relativity, we are adding uh, time as a, another dimension. But Riemann make this complex to n dimensions. Wow. So, <laughs> so Einstein just get the, the Riemann's yeah. equation applied for dimension yeah. four. Wow. <laughs> That's... And talk about difficulty in math, I remember uh, I was a little bit of a goofball at times when I was in college, and I remember this one time I, would, I sat in the back row with with two of my best friends in calculus three, uh -huh. and I remember when we started talking about solving equations in four or more variables, mm -hmm. and talking about okay, well now how do you measure the area or the volume? under a fourth dimensional curve. Yeah. And I just remember sitting in the back row and like, oh, my brain <laughs> feels like it's about to explode <laughs> because I'm trying to imagine. Yeah, a four dimensional The curve. volume under a four dimensional curve. I'm like, <laughs> ow. And yeah, and thanks to, to Riemann. Yeah. This understanding math in higher dimensions more than more than three dimensions yeah and you, you can't picture it yeah no but... there's no way to picture it there's that i mean i cannot picture it uh, <laughs> I, I remember uh carl sagan trying to make an attempt to picture how a 
four dimensional cube yeah. will will be you know? yeah. Yeah. when i was very little I, I used to look at this series that was that was a great that was a great series yes. no, I, re I remember I, I i can picture that yeah he he actually held what he, what he called you know the shadow of a four dimensional yes cube. exactly like, exactly a yeah, tetract yeah. a hypercube the hypercube yeah, yeah. yeah there you go there you go and that what that is as far as I can picture a four-dimensional <laughs> object. <laughs> so. Although I will say, uh -huh. I mean, I, re I remember, I remember that the, that series Cosmos very well, and it was things like that in when I was a kid that really got me interested mm -hmm. in math. To say, oh my goodness, there's there's something so complex that can be understood, and still at the same time not understood right yeah it's it the formulas can be understood but you can't you can't as you just said you can't picture yes four-dimensional cube this this is amazing that people are working this stuff out no and and this is and this is great complex enough you know that i i think we already mentioned this before no when 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 we send the man to the to, to the moon in, mm -hmm. in the late 60s we didn't use uh Einstein relativity equation. Yeah. It was too complex. Yeah. yeah. We use Newton. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially thinking about the computers on yeah. on the on the, the ship at the time. There was no way they could have done real time computations based on Einstein. No way. They yeah, they used math that had been around for a long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember who said it, but um you know, it makes me think of the, the the phrase that you know we stand on the shoulder of giants. Yes. You know that that no one, no one can ever say, well, this idea that I've come up with, or this this theory, or this formula, mm -hmm. I have come up with it from scratch myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Know, and you know one of the things that that we wanted to look at mm -hmm. in this. In this section of, of math, looking at the history of math, is the fact that you know Riemann's and, and Gauss's formulas and theories were built upon Euclid. Yes. And all of the mathematicians since then. You know, that the, the, the math is something that has been slowly developed and discovered over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. But every step is built on the step that came before them. Yes. The, 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 there is a caveat also with, with, with Riemann. So I, I mentioned before Riemann, like, like, his, uh, like his teacher uh, Gauss, he didn't want to publish anything uh, that was not uh, complete. You know? mm -hmm. So all what we know from Riemann was from the little thing that he published. And I find in the notes that when, when he died, his, uh, you know, one one of these uh, servants was, you know, he trashed the whole the whole things. So we may lose a lot mm. that Riemann has think about contribute because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, but and Riemann also, you know, I it, it didn't say, but we we don't have to. He was also a prodigy a prodigy child because. You know, he has a lot of contributions, but he like he died early. He died at thirty nine years old. Oh. You no, know? so so imagine if, if if he can live more. Imagine if his work that has not been published, mm -hmm. you know, came up to the light. We, mm -hmm. we don't have that opportunity with him right now. Yeah. But you know, the the, the there is a lot of of, of mystery. Of, of world that will keep in mystery because of this mm -hmm. event after his death. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the personality of, of who, who, who was Riemann, no? Um, we, we also found that uh, his father was a poor Lat Lutheran pastor, no? And uh, he was the second of six children there, no? But of course, he, he was brilliant in mathematics and, mm -hmm. and uh, he... This is something really interesting, no? So what, one of the things that we 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 know about this pers the personality of Riemann, no? Mm -hmm. uh, at the age of nineteen, he studied 
philology and Christian theology mm -hmm. in order to become a pastor and help with his family finance. Yeah, right? well, that's interesting. The, the, the philology, I looked that up, you know, it's the study uh, of language and the structure of language. So, you know, just like you're saying, just like Gauss. Yes, you know, just look like at math Gauss. and language. <laughs> yes. It's an interesting combination. Another thing that, 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 that I want to highlight is he wants to study that because he wants to help his family. Mm -hmm. If his family fine. So so you can see a little more of his personality here. And we will we, we also have that Riemann was a dedicated Christian, no? And he saw his life as a mathematician as another way to serve God. Mm -hmm. So here we we we, we have an, another personality, another big, brilliant mind that thinks, you know, that doesn't think because Oh, because of math, there's no God. Mm -hmm. no. He 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 clearly understand that math was another way to serve God. Mm -hmm. The quote that you gave from Gauss, yes, that God arithmetizes. Yes, that you know, and I, I think it was the last episode we 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 looked. There was an image that we looked at of God with uh, with a compass. Yeah, that uh, looking at God as as the great mathematician mm -hmm. that um, it's very easy to it's very easy to get a picture of God as just this this old man who sits up on the cloud and says you can do this you can't do that you know just giving us rules I like to look at God as more of a mathematician I mean yeah. he has set a structure mm -hmm. to the universe yeah and he understands the math of all of it you know how it all works together how it all interacts um you know at some point we're going to talk more about you know the the levels of, of infinity yes and uh, how much bigger one level of infinity is than the one below it mm -hmm. and to think that that god looks down on all of all of the universe, all of creation, and maybe multiple universes, we don't know. But God sees all of that and sees how it all fits together, and yeah. and understand and and not only understands but has created the math for all of it. And that is the the the, the exact thing that I want to highlight because there is an order mm -hmm. in everything, mm -hmm. and it's it's if you if you think about that. You know, uh, in order to discover what is that order, you have to assume that there is an order. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. But who gave that order? That that's that's yeah. something that yeah. uh, people doesn't start to think about that. No. Yeah. And the other thing is that how can a person in his mind come up with a mathematical formula, and years later, that is the instrument that we need to understand. Mm. another piece of our universe. Mm -hmm. That means that it has to be written in that language. Mm -hmm. It has to 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 it has to be there prior us. Yeah. It precedes us and we are discovering in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this path, no. So um, there's no way chance can do that. Right, right. No, that, that, that is, that, <laughs> there's no way chance can do that. Yeah. That that's a topic that I would love to have a conversation with a mathematician. About. Yes, yes. What does it mean when a formula is discovered that is then applied? So, if you are if you are a mathematician, or if you know a mathematician, uh, you know someone that is a professor in math, or you know someone that works in the area, especially in theoretical math, let us know. Uh, we would love to to have you on and and to talk of, to you about about this topic i would like to um to to end this part uh with riemann's what is written in riemann's tombstone no so i'm, I'm quoting here from uh and this part re refers to romans 828 no that's what is written in his tombstone right now here rests in God, George Frederick Bernhard Riemann, professor in Göttingen, born in 
Bresalens, 17 September 1826, died in Alaska, 20 July 1866. For those who love God, all things must work together for the best. Mm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. No, that's beautiful. And and so if you are somebody that 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 is watching these videos and you have heard in your whole the college history, you know that because of science or because of math we don't need God. That's not the way that most of the brains in our history of math mm -hmm. are looking. This yeah you know? yeah. Well, and back back to what you you said just a, a minute ago, the study of math is the study of order. Yes. The study of science is the study of order. We're, we're, we're trying to understand in studying math and studying science, we're trying to understand the universe, how the universe works, how everything fits together, um, the structure, especially looking at math, the structure of everything. Mm -hmm. How can we write a formula to describe motion mm -hmm. or any, any property of, of the universe? In the history of the study of mathematics and science, as you said, you need to assume that the universe is ordered. Yes. And people studied the order of the universe because they assumed that there was a God that put order to it. Yeah. Um, that it's not just randomness. It's not just, uh, it's not chaos. It's not chance, it's not chaos. I completely agree with you, yes. At some point, I, I would love to have a conversation about chaos theory because you know people talk about that as, as and yes. say, well, because there's this chaos theory, it must mean there's no order to anything, which is absolutely not true. Uh, we, we have to distinct chaos from chaos theory. Mm -hmm. right. uh, because even in, in, in the case of chaos theory, we, we always find something that is, uh, that is called the attractor. Mm -hmm. And the attractor, it's uh, given certain conditions or given any condition of a system, of a chaotic system, mm -hmm. it came up ending in that attractor loop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, there's yeah. more to come. That, yeah. that can be another video. Yeah, that, 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 that would definitely be another video. Because that's a big but, thing. But as you said, yeah, you know, and and I I I love looking at this uh, the verse that he has on his tombstone. For those who love God, all things must work together for the best. Yes, uh, as a it's a paraphrase of Romans eight twenty eight. Mm -hmm. um, but think about that: all things must work together. Now, think about that from the mind of a mathematician. Mm -hmm. All things must work together with this image of. All these formulas work together. Mm -hmm. It shows this order, and it shows that in his his faith that all of these things work together because God placed them there, and because we believe that God is love, then all of this must work together for for the good, because because that's God's intention. God wants everything to work together. For, for us to to love him, to love each other, and to work for a, a world that is in harmony, yeah, with nature, with each other. This this also reminds me of the psalm that says, "The heaven and the earth declares the glory of mm. the Creator." Mm -hmm. the world, no, so it's 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 really amazing, and and these mathematicians that 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 we are looking at, they 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 saw that, mm -hmm. and they saw, wow, what a wonderful. Uh, creator, what a wonderful God that make all of these mm -hmm. so beautiful, so complex, yeah. no? and in such an order, no? and uh, and yeah, that, yeah. After that, I, I have, I mean, I'm speechless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, as it's, we've we've seen, we've looked at two more uh, brilliant mathematicians in history. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have one more mm -hmm. episode on the history of math, and then we're going to continue on uh, after that yep um, well but we hope you've enjoyed this conversation today and so far in all these episodes if you have any thoughts any corrections anything that we might have made a mistake on please let us know in the comments 
Uh, we want you to be part of this conversation. If you want to keep in touch with us, you can go to thatnerdycatholic.com and there is a uh, contact form. Uh, if you are a mathematician or if you are someone that works in the area, especially in uh, theoretical math, please uh, connect with us. Uh, we would love to you know, look at the possibility of having you on for a conversation. Uh, we want to we want this to be more than just the two of us uh, saying the, the what little we actually understand about <laughs> yes. this about this topic. If you want to be uh, updated with what we're putting out, you can go to that nerdycatholic.com and sign up for our email list. Uh, if you think that we've earned it, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification to get an update on YouTube whenever we put out a new video and you know like and comment on this video share it with your friends especially those those nerds in your life uh, if you like the merch that we're wearing you can go to that nerdycothic.com merch to get your your own t-shirt or mug uh, to let the world know that you are indeed a, a nerdy catholic and uh, i just want to thank you for for joining us today we hope to see you again next week thank you System shut down.